With Michael Jeffries at the helm for nearly 22 years, Abercrombie & Fitch has today become a teen fashion brand, synonymous with upscale casual clothes and semi-naked models advertising their wares. However, if we trace Abercrombie & Fitch back to its roots, we will see a picture of a very different company, with a very different demographic as its clientele, and even selling a very different range of goods and services. Welcome back to the Vintage Watch Collector, and today we are going to explore the Abercrombie & Fitch Soluna and Seafarer watches, and along with it we are also going to explore the history of the company itself. Abercrombie & Fitch was simply called Abercrombie Co when it was founded in 1892 in New York by David T. Abercrombie, who was a topographer and expert in the outdoors. It began life selling high quality hunting, camping and fishing equipment to professional hunters and explorers. Ezra Fitch, who worked as a lawyer and was a customer of Abercrombie, purchased a large share of the company in 1900 and became joint owner and by 1904, the company changed its name to Abercrombie & Fitch Co. Although the company was successful under the guidance of the two owners and continued to grow, the two men had disagreements about the direction they wanted the company to go in. Fitch wanted the company to appeal to the general public, while Abercrombie wanted the company to serve only the elite outdoorsmen. This came to a head in 1907, when David Abercrombie sold his share to Ezra Fitch and left the company. Ezra Fitch carried on at the head of the company along with other partners and continued with his vision that the company should sell upscale sporting goods and services to the general public rather than just specialised outdoor gear. The company was even able to sell its products worldwide by producing 50,000 expensive catalogues in 1909 that were nearly 500 pages long and mailing it worldwide. They sold items such as camping gear, outdoor clothes and hunting equipment through their catalogue and were successfully able to create an image of themselves as an aspirational brand. In 1917, the company moved its premises to a flagship 12-storey building on the corner of Madison Avenue, and the store included a floor with a shooting range, golfing school, in-house watch repair and retail department, a floor selling hunting and fishing equipment, and even gave fly fishing lessons on the roof. It had many famous customers, including President Roosevelt, who purchased equipment for a safari, and Amelia Earhart, who bought her flying jackets from there. During Prohibition, it became the place to buy a hip flask, and by 1939, Abercrombie & Fitch was calling itself the greatest sporting goods store in the world. So in keeping with the outdoor theme, Abercrombie & Fitch wanted to sell their own branded watch that would appeal to their hunting and fishing clientele. They approached their watchmaking partner, Hoye, in the late 1940s to come up with such a watch. This watch was to be based upon a theory developed by John Alden Knight, which he called Soluna Theory. So before we take a look at the watch that Hoye developed, let's take a brief look at Soluna Theory. John Alden Knight was a fly fisherman and part-time author on the subject. One day in 1926, he was on a fishing excursion with a local guide on a lake known locally as Helen Blazes in Florida. The guide was so good with his knowledge for the best times for fishing that John Alden Knight asked him for the secret of his knowledge. The guide mentioned that it was to do with the position of the moon. He refined that information with the experiments and came to the conclusion that fishing conditions were affected by three factors, the sun, the moon, and the tides. He wrote a book called Moon Up, Moon Down, explaining his theory, which he called Soluna Theory, and published a set of tables based upon his theory, which showed the best times of the year for fishing and hunting. Knight sums up Soluna Theory like this, and I quote, other conditions not being unfavorable, fish will feed, animals will move about, birds will sing and fly from place to place, in fact, all living things will become more active, more alive during Saluna periods than at other times of apparent equal value. Hoye, using Knight's theory, came up with a Saluna watch for Abercrombie & Fitch. This watch was unique because it features a special dial at the 6 o'clock position, and it took 59 days to make one full rotation, which is twice the duration of the lunar cycle. Once you were at a certain location, the dial could be set to show the times of the high and low tides by pressing a button at the 9 o'clock position. 
This information is useful in telling you when the best times are for fishing or hunting or whatever activity you are about to do. Let's take a look now at how the dial is read. The white arrow in the blue sections tell you the times of the high tides and the white arrows in the yellow sections point to the times of the low tides. The times between one high tide and another high tide is approximately 12 hours and 25 minutes. So we can see from this dial that there will be one high tide at midday and the next high tide will be at 25 minutes past midnight. So you can see that this information would be useful if you were out on a fishing excursion and it saved the wearer from carrying around tide charts. The Saluna watch was sold by Abercrombie & Fitch from around the early 1950s, yet through a process of continuous improvement, they moved the Saluna dial to the 9 o'clock position and added chronograph dials at the 6 o'clock and 3 o'clock positions. This second version of the watch was called the Seafarer. Incidentally, chronograph in watch speak simply means a stopwatch, so the dial at 6 o'clock was a stopwatch which could go up to 12 hours and the dial at 3 o'clock could time events up to 30 minutes. The Seafarer watch with its chronograph abilities and the Soluna dial proved to be a commercial hit for Abercrombie and & Fitch and was sold by them from the early 1950s through to the 1970s although it went through several cosmetic changes throughout that period. The cosmetic changes were a refresh of the cases and the dials used. Sadly, the golden years for Abercrombie & Fitch came to an end in 1977 when it filed for bankruptcy. During the previous 10 years, America had gone through massive economic and social changes with the Vietnam War, riots in Washington DC and the assassination of Martin Luther King. The products sold by Abercrombie & Fitch seemed to be geared towards the old rich and they did not move with the times and offer products for the zeitgeist. Examples include boots made of long-haired goatskin hide, miniature cannons and stuffed leather baby animals. The Abercrombie & Fitch brand was sold to Oshman Sporting Goods who owned it from 1978 to 1987. During that time they managed to expand the company into 26 stores but the product lineup they offered changed from fishing and hunting supplies to exercise machines, tennis rackets and golfing equipment. Oshman's then sold Abercrombie & Fitch to The Limited Incorporated in 1988. The Limited decided to concentrate their product lineup on clothing and they brought in Michael Jeffries to run Abercrombie & Fitch in 1992. He is the person responsible for transforming the company into what it's known as today. Like him or hate him, Jeffries was very successful during his run and he used provocative advertising methods as he expanded the brand into 1049 stores across the world including two offshoot brands Abercrombie & Kids and Hollister. Although he was successful for the company, he was a PR nightmare for them and once alluded that the company would only hire young and beautiful staff and refuse to carry women's clothing above a size 10. Jeffrey stepped down as CEO in December 2014 and Arthur Martinez has now taken over the running of the brand. They are slowly stepping away from the use of nearly naked models to advertise their clothes and are going after a slightly older consumer market, although still young at 18 to 25. It is doubtful that Abercrombie & Fitch will return to the selling of sporting goods and services as it did in its heyday, but what is certain is that the range of watches that they now sell are nowhere near as desirable as the Soluna and Seafarer models that they once offered. But what about John Alden Knight's Soluna theory? Well, that's still going strong today, although it's moved on from printed charts and onto the internet and smartphone apps. The smartphone apps using GPS data to work out the best Soluna times. Many hunters and fishermen refer to the information before heading out on a trip. That's it guys, and thank you very much for watching another episode of the Vintage Watch Collector. Do we have any hunters or fishermen out there? And do you refer to Saluna information when planning your trip? Is Saluna theory just superstitious nonsense, or is it something that you swear by? Let me know about your experiences, as I'd love to know. Put something in the comment section below. If you want to know more about Saluna theory, I've left a link for you in the description below. Hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. This is Roger from the Vintage Watch Collector, thanks again 
and see you next time.